Hey everyone, we're supposed to be getting on the Independence of the Seas today, but as you know, cruises are canceled. We're not going to let that stop us from having fun. So if we can't cruise the high seas, we're going to cruise the highways. And today we're checking out the east coast of pure Michigan. Hey everyone, welcome back. Stephanie and I are on I-94 East. We're about 30 minutes from our first stop, which is the Huron Lightship. Say hi, Steph. Uh, now, lightships are built where the water's too deep or too expensive for traditional lighthouses. This particular one was retired in 1970, it's no longer operational, but they do do seasonal tours. Unfortunately, we've been driving for a while and I'm not sure we're gonna make it before they close, but either way, we're gonna try to get some great video and tell you a little bit more about it so you can learn what light ships are really all about. Right beside me here is the St. Clair River, also known as the Blue River, for obvious reasons. Right ahead of us, we got the Huron Lightship. So we're gonna be there in just a minute. All right, here behind me, we've got the Huron Lightship. It began service in 1921, primarily as a relief vessel for other Great Lakes lightships. This ship is 97 feet long. It's 24 feet in beam and carried a crew of 11. On clear nights, her beacon could be seen for 14 miles. After 1940, the Huron was the only light ship on the Great Lakes. It was retired by the Coast Guard in 1970 and presented to the city of Port Huron in 1971. All right, so that's definitely pretty cool. Uh, I gotta be honest, before today, I didn't even realize there was such a thing as light ships uh, that served as lighthouses. Uh, next stop is gonna be Fort Gratiot Lighthouse, which is the oldest lighthouse in the state of Michigan. On our way to the lighthouse, we're passing under the Blue Water Bridge, which is a twin span international bridge that connects Port Huron, Michigan in the US with Sarnia, Ontario in Canada. The Fort Gratiot Lighthouse is the oldest in Michigan. It stands 86 feet in height and is still in use today. All right, as the sun is starting to go down, our journey for the day is coming to an end. But tomorrow we're gonna head around the thumb and up the sunrise coast of Michigan. We're gonna start our day here in Croswell, Michigan, where right now I'm crossing the Black River on the longest suspension footbridge in the state. It was built in 1905 and it was funded by the Michigan Sugar Companies. It aided the residents of Croswell to get over to the popular uh, park here, as well as help the workers uh, have a more direct route to the work in the factories. All along M25, there's a lot of beautiful roadside parks you can stop, uh, just take a break, and maybe even learn a little history. This is the Port Sanilac Lighthouse Station. It was built by the U.S. Lighthouse Commission in 1886, and today it's owned by a private family, so it's not open to the public.
We're here at the White Rock Roadside Park. We thought this would be a great stop to enjoy the scenery and grab some lunch. The White Rock in Lake Huron marks the northern line of territory released by the Indian tribes of Michigan under the treaty made at Detroit on November 17, 1807. Next up on our trip around M25, we're in Port Hope at the Point O'Bark Lighthouse, built in 1848. All right, so now we're on our way to Port Austin. Stephanie found this pretty cool looking sculpture. Uh, it's called the uh, Emergency Arc. It's by Scott Hawking. So we just got done looking at the uh, sculpture here. Emergency art. Yep. Uh, I'm glad it's a sunny day because it would have to be one hell of an emergency for me to try to get in that thing and think that it was going to float. Now seriously though, it, it's pretty cool. It looks like it's from reclaimed wood. But a quick disclaimer, uh, we just read the sign out front and apparently uh, it's private property and we were supposed to just view this from the road. Whoops. One cool thing about cruising around and not really uh, being in any hurry to get any certain places, you, you learn some things. It's, it's some education. So apparently, uh, here there was a great fire of 1881. Uh, some forest fires were, were burning in the thumb. Uh, a gale, gale force wind swept in uh, and ended up uh, fanning it into an inferno. Uh, fires raged for three days. It said a million acres were devastated. But here's the interesting part. Uh, the new American Red Cross won support for its prompt aid uh, to the fire victims. And this was the first disaster relief uh, furnished by the American Red Cross. So we just tried to go to the Saginaw River Rear Range Lighthouse, uh, but every every direction I tried to take from Google uh, was running us into what appeared to be private property and factories uh, fenced off roads. So unfortunately, that one's out. Next stop uh, is going to be Tawa City, uh, where we're going to be staying for the night. This is the Tower West Point Lighthouse. It was built in 1876, and the tower stands 67 feet high. All right, day three of our journey has officially started. We're leaving Tawas, heading up to Mackinac City, uh, up along the Sunrise Coast. And today we hope to see seven lighthouses. Our first stop today is in Harrisville at the Old Bailey School. Built in 1907 out of Norway Pine, this is one of the few remaining one-room log schoolhouses still standing in Michigan. The Sturgeon Point Light Station was built in 1870 to warn ships of a reef that extends one and a half miles from Sturgeon Point. No longer in service, she remains as a historic example of a Cape Cod-style Great Lakes lighthouse. Now we're here on Presque Isle where they've got this range light as well as two lighthouses, the old lighthouse and the new lighthouse. The old Presque Harbor lighthouse was built in 1840 to mark the entrance to Presque Isle Bay and its harbor. The tower is 30 feet tall and 18 feet in diameter at its base. 
In 1868, the U.S. Lighthouse Service decided to build a new light at the tip of the Presque Isle Peninsula. The 113-foot-tall lighthouse went into service in 1871 and remains an active aid to navigation almost 150 years later. In 1890, the U.S. Lighthouse Board recommended that a light and fog signal system be built at 40 mile point to cover the 17 mile stretch between Presque Isle and Sheboygan. The light was completed in 1896 and was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1984. We're here at the McGulpin Point Lighthouse. We're actually going to get to climb to the top of the tower. There's the light. The view from the top of McGulpin Lighthouse is beautiful, to be sure. We got the Mackinac Bridge out there. I'm really glad that we got to come up in this one. Unfortunately, uh, we haven't been able to go inside any of the lighthouses because of COVID-19. Most of them are closed for the 2020 season. But this one's open. We were able to come up to the top, and man, what a view. Uh, this lighthouse worked in conjunction with the Mackinac Lighthouse uh, for the ships that are trying to navigate the Mackinac Strait. Uh, and that's where we're heading next, so we'll see you there. Hey everyone, here at the last stop of the day, just in the shadows of the Mackinac Bridge, we're at the old Mackinac Point Lighthouse. Uh, this went into operation in 1892, but there is also a steam-powered fog signal that went into operation in 1890, and we're gonna listen to that right now. Yeah, it's definitely loud, loud enough for the ships to hear. This is gonna be our last stop for the day here. Uh, we had a great time uh, heading up the Sunrise Coast, checking out the lighthouses uh, on Lake Huron and on the eastern side of the state of Michigan. Tomorrow, we're gonna hop on the ferry and head across the, uh, the lake here to Mackinac Island. So you can check that video out by clicking up there or down in the description. Thanks for joining us on this ride. Uh, Stephanie and I really had a good time. Uh, if you get a chance, get out and see Pure Michigan or whatever state you're from or country you're from, just get out. There's so many beautiful local places you can go. We may not be able to cruise right now or, or get on a plane to anywhere we want, but that doesn't mean we can't go out and explore and enjoy. Be safe, everyone.